it is John from Side Hustle Experiment. In today's video, I have an insurance expert on the channel. Before you say, no, like this is gonna be boring, I promise you this is not a boring interview. This is actually super important. I have Ashlyn Hayden on the channel. Uh, we talk everything. I get tons of questions about insurance, how to best protect yourself. She covers when you need insurance, when you're selling on Amazon, what Amazon is requiring of sellers, when you need to get it. We talk about, do you need to insure your house? If you're working out of your house, is there a different insurance you need for that? Crazy claims people have formed. We talk all about prep centers too, about getting insurance for weird things that could happen there. Supposedly a lot of prep centers do not have insurance. So if there was a fire or a flood there, you're kind of screwed. So she kind of talks you through how you can protect yourself from working with prep centers. We talk about cease and desist letters. We cover pretty much everything. And she's super cool, entertaining. Highly recommend you go check her out. If you're looking for something, let me know if you have questions or comments below. I will either get an answer from her if it's like kind of insurance related. If not, just go follow her on social and go check her out to say thanks. And I hope you guys enjoy the video. What's up guys? Today on the channel, I have Ashlyn Haddon. She does insurance specifically for the e-commerce space. I know you guys are probably like, this is going to be super boring. Like who cares about insurance? But I was actually watching some interviews that she has done and yeah, there's a lot of crazy stuff that could happen. <laughs> so we're kind of going to go through those questions. And, you know, I think a lot of times too, it's like, maybe you don't need it now, but like, there's just a lot to think about. Amazon's always changing. So I always get asked people, oh, when do I need insurance? I was like, let me bring out an expert and I'm just going to send them the link to this video, anything insurance related. So thank you so much. Yeah, we're not going to be super boring. At least we'll have a little bit of fun today. Yeah, we'll definitely have some fun. But I feel like when people hear like insurance, like, oh, I don't need that. Yeah, they like run the other way. Like when they say, what do you do for a living? And I'm like, I sell insurance. They're like, um, I think my dog's cat's brother's uncle is calling. I got to go. So... <laughs> I'm used to it. Everybody runs away from me. <laughs> so can you give me a, like a quick overview? Like how did, were you like selling on Amazon or did you always just sell insurance? Yeah. So my first career was in banking. I was a branch manager at a bank and I just, I hated it and decided that I wanted to find something else. And one of my friends came to me and said, Hey, this company is hiring. Why don't you go sell insurance? And I was like, absolutely not. I don't want to be a used car salesman. Everybody hates insurance people. I'm just not interested. And she came back and she's like, well, if you do, I get this bonus. So would you at least take the interview? So I did the interview just so she would get her bonus. And the friend. gentleman, I know, right? I gave up my day. <laughs> Well, the gentleman who interviewed me was like, this is a man's industry and those men will outsell you every day. And I was like, I'll take the job and I'll prove you wrong. So I started selling insurance. I was a rookie of the year, top rep in the state, third in the entire company, like accepted my award on stage and texted him like, who can't sell insurance now? So I kind of got in insurance on accident and I did home auto life insurance, like the normal everyday kind of insurance. And then I decided to go out on my own and open my own agency. And one of my clients came to me and said, Hey, I'm selling on this platform and Amazon's requiring me to have this third party insurance for product liability. Can you help me? And I was like, I didn't even know that there was third party sellers on Amazon. I thought Amazon did everything. So I was like, go away. No one likes this was five years ago. No one likes online retailers. No one's going to insure you. It's going to take me forever. It's not worth my time. And basically told Chris just to go away. And he didn't listen and he wouldn't go away. Thank goodness. I spent a couple of months trying to help him and he came back to me. He's like, hey, I'm in this Facebook group and there's 15,000 of us in here. Can I post your information? And I was like, hmm, maybe this is worth my time. And so I kind of just started to do some research and really I fell in love with this. I fell in love with the community. I fell in love with the webinars and the conferences and just how much each of you try to help each other grow and learn and succeed. It's not like any other industry out there. There, You guys still have that competition, like get off my listing, but you truly are trying to help each other. So that's what I fell in love with. So we just celebrated our fifth year on my own. 
my own agency. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I kind of got into it on accident, but now I eat, sleep and breathe Amazon all day, every day, like you crazy folks. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's wow. That's amazing. Can you kind of cover, I kind of know, but what does the typical Amazon seller need? Is there yeah. like, can you still be selling and not have insurance? We'll yeah. get into whether that's a good idea or not a okay. little later, but what is kind of like the main thing Amazon wants? Yeah. So once you hit that $10,000 a month threshold, Amazon is now requiring that you have general liability and product liability. And let me kind of break down the differences of that. So general liability is going to be what you do or say as a business. Product liability is going to be what your products do to harm someone else. So general liability is going to be, I'm selling this chapstick or lip balm or whatever it's called. And I say, this chapstick is going to make your lips look super sexy and voluptuous. And I use it and I don't think it does. And I sue you for false advertisement. That's what you do or say as a business. That's general liability. Now, if I put this chapstick on and my lips break out and I have to go to have surgery or whatever, that's product liability. That's what my products did to harm you. So Amazon says you have to have both what you do or say as a business and what your products do to harm other people. Now, there's all kinds of other things that I suggest, but those are the two things that Amazon requires. Um, and then there's other platforms too that require it. So it's not just Amazon. If you're looking to grow on other platforms, they have those requirements also. So it's, you can have one policy for all the different platforms that you're selling on. Or if you're selling like um, at a farmer's market, you can have that on the same policy. So just know it's like, it's your ensuring your business, not necessarily just the platform you're selling on. Got it. Okay. So in a, I guess like in a scenario where I guess like your lips did like blow up and like <laughs> wrong or whatever, how would that process work? Yeah. Like, so the customers, I guess they're going to sue everyone or do whatever they're going to do. Everyone. So how am I covered? Like, do I have to pay for legal fees yeah. or like, well, insurance? So if you didn't that? have insurance, you would pay for the legal fees out of pocket, which we all know attorneys are expensive. I mean, they're charging four or $500 an hour. Um, and it would be probably several hundred hours for a product liability claim. Then you would pay for any settlement. Um, so if let's say you were, they sued you for a half a million dollars and they won, you would pay that half a million dollars out of pocket. If you had an insurance policy, you would pick up the phone and call me. We would call a claim into your carrier and say, Hey, Hartford, we have a claim. Hartford then would hire the attorney at their expense to defend you in any settlement that is awarded by the court would then be covered under your policy, up to your policy limits. So if you've got a million dollars, you only bought a million dollars in coverage and there's a $2 million claim, of course, they're not going to pay $2 million. They're only going to pay what you what your policy limits are. But we all know that insurance companies don't like to pay claims, Right. So they hire the best damn attorneys to defend you, to get you out of that claim. The defense attorneys for the insurance companies are going to be far better than you could ever get on your own or afford on your own. So you pick up the phone, you make those phone, make that phone call to me. We call in the claim. It's handled. Like that's what you have insurance for. That's what you get to sleep well at night for. That's, that's what this policy is for. You will really, for RAOA wholesalers, you will use this policy for the defense cost more than you will ever use it for that million dollar claim. As an example, I like to use this one because it's so absolutely ridiculous. We had a customer who was just reselling a product. It was FBA, so it was fulfilled by Amazon, shipped to the gentleman's house. The guy tripped over the box and broke his hip and broke his clavicle and sued USPS, sued Amazon, sued the manufacturer of the product and sued my third party seller. It was third over thirty thousand dollars in legal fees to get his name dropped from the lawsuit because this dude tripped over a box so we didn't do anything wrong my client didn't do anything wrong there wasn't any product liability issues this dude literally tripped over a box and it was thirty thousand dollars in legal fees that's crazy i didn't even really think about that too like yeah insurance people don't want to play out the claims so no like, nobody wants to be like they want like the best <laughs> lawyer that you could get and I would assume maybe like the company would be like, well, are we, do we really want to go up like against this like insurance company's lawyer? Right. It just depends on how big they are and what they want mm -hmm. to do. 
Yeah, I could see how that'd be like, yeah, no, we're going to pass on like going against Hartford. Like we're only doing right. like a million dollars or whatever. So with that being said, that all sounds like good and great. And I know the cost, but what is the typical cost of a policy that would like protect you? Good question. So I hate to say this because nobody wants to hear this answer, but it depends. It really is going to depend on what you're selling, where you're sourcing from, how much you're selling. Are you sourcing from the U.S.? Are you not sourcing from the U.S.? Are you selling fidget spinners with knives on the end of it? Or are you selling a guitar pick? Like it really just depends. Insurance is all about risk. So the more you sell, the more products are in the hands of the consumers, the more risk you have, the more expensive it is. So if you're doing $10,000 a month, your price is going to be cheaper than if you're doing $100,000 a month. Most of our RAOA wholesalers end up around $500 a year, not a month, a year. So it is so, 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 so affordable. Most of our carriers will allow you to pay monthly. So you can break that down into a monthly payment. So as you continue to grow, then you can increase that if you need to. But it is so inexpensive. It's it's an hour of an attorney's time. One hour will pay your policy. Yeah, no, that's a really good. I was kind of shocked almost how cheap it was. When I like was doing the paperwork, I was like, oh, I guess this is the price. Like it's safe. And it was like 500 bucks. And I, I was like, the next month, I'm like, why wasn't I charged? And I reached out to you guys like, you paid for the year. I was like, oh, like, okay. Like, <laughs> <You're> like, <"Yeah." laughs> I was like, oh, wow. This like really is like super affordable. And, yeah, yeah, and I don't hold me to that. If you're selling fidget spinners with knives on the end of it, it's going to be more than $500 for the year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. That would make sense. Are there yeah. certain maybe categories or maybe are more risky to sell? Yeah, you think? absolutely. So I like the top, I have like a top seven, you better not sell this unless you have insurance. Okay. On the body, so anything like topicals, lotions, makeups, things like that. In the body, so your food, your supplements, those types of things. For a pet, I know it sounds crazy. People sue like crazy over their pets. So any type of pet food, pet supplements, leashes, that kind of stuff. For a child, anything. Anything for a baby or a child. Do not sell it without insurance. I don't care what it is. If it's a, a bib, I don't care. Um, So on the body, in the body, for the pet, for a child, any type of thing that has to do with water. So anything that is like pool, but like a floating device for a pool, a life vest, anything around water, make sure that you've got canoes. We have a lot of people right now selling canoes. That kind of stuff. Wow. And then outdoor stuff. So like your hammocks and anything that you're going to like take camping or rock climbing or anything like outdoorsy. And then anything in the exercise equipment kind of space. So resistance bands, even something as silly as workout videos. We're seeing a lot of that kind of stuff. Somebody gets hurt when they're doing a workout video and suing. So on the body, in the body, for a pet, for a child, outdoor, and like exercise equipment. So those are our big top. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's super interesting that like, yeah, I feel like that probably happens. Like they're talking about a friend and they're like, oh, it's Amazon, like sue them. But like, they don't realize that it's like, I sent the DVD in or like someone exactly. else sent the DVD in. And, and we have a lot of people that are like, well, they feel like they're protected because they're behind this keyboard, but people don't realize that it's not. They think they're suing Amazon and they think that Amazon's got these huge pockets and they don't realize there's a person behind this computer screen and they're the ones that you're actually suing. It's the mom and dads that are trying to make ends meet that you're suing. Can insurance protect you against like maybe like a cease and desist letter? Like you so, buy a bunch of stuff. Like I just got one today. it will be fully transparent. Yeah. And I'm going to sell out of it and not sell it again. But now that we're talking, I was like, huh, I wonder if there's like... So your insurance is going to pick up if you were to get sued. So it's not going to respond for you in the case of a cease and desist. Sellerbasics.com is one of our partners. They, Paul Roffelson, he okay. has a program where you can pay a monthly fee and then they will respond to those cease and desist for you. Now, don't quote me because I... I don't know for sure, but I think it's like $100 a month and they will respond to those types of situations 
for you, but your policy won't kick in until you actually get that lawsuit. So Paul can help you respond to the cease and desist, but we won't kick in until you actually get sued over that. Like the cease and desist moves forward. Got it. That's, that's good to know. Yeah. This one was like delivered by FedEx, like overnight, like it's like six pages and I was like, what is going on here? Yeah. Interesting. No, no. Get off it, John. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, yeah, done with that. A lot of the people, well, I do too, but they re work with a prep center. Prep centers are great. I started with my first one and it was going really good. And then it turned out into an absolute disaster. Phone calls to like local police and like all sorts of stuff. And I think and there was a lot of sellers who were using it. They must've had like close to half a million dollars worth of inventory just from estimate, is there any way you could protect yourself from a situation like this? Like you send stuff there, they lose it. Like, is there anything you can do for that? Yeah. So yes, you absolutely can add that to your current general liability and product liability. And what we do is we extend coverage to that prep center. Now you do have to have the exact address. So that's kind of where things get a little wonky is if they don't tell you where it's at, it's hard to insure. But if you have the exact address, then you can extend coverage to that prep center. I always recommend that even if the prep center says, oh, well, we have insurance. Mm, sure you do. No, you don't. Uh, and maybe you did, maybe you did, but you could cancel it at any time. And mm. you as the owner of that product don't know. So why would you put, like, would you send $50,000 to somebody in cash without like any type of insurance? Like, Come on, guys. Like, this is your cash. Your inventory is your cash. Why would you place that responsibility on someone else and not insure it? Add it to your own policy. Know that it's covered. And if there is something that happens, then you have that coverage yourself and not relying on a prep center who you don't really know hold that responsibility. So even if they say, yeah, I've got insurance for your products, don't trust it. Don't trust okay. it. It's not worth it. So does that also cover like almost maybe lost inventory? So like if I sent like a thousand dollars with that stuff and they're like, me, like UPS says it went there, like someone signed for it and now like no one knows where it is. So it de depends. <laughs> Claims are tough because of it. it goes on the situation. But if there is a clear responsibility on the prep center where you can see the bill of lading, they've accepted it, and there's been a theft, and you can get a police report and say, yes, they stole it. Yeah, that's typically, typically something that is covered. If it just mysteriously disappeared and you're not, you don't know where it's at, then that gets a little harder because insurance companies need to know, like, there is a physical loss there. So again, it depends on the situation, but yes, that is typically something that is covered. Got it. That makes a lot of sense too. And I find it's like very hard as we're scaling up or even watching other people scale. As you get bigger, it's like some of the stuff that I would fight for as like a smaller seller, like, oh, like Amazon lost one of this or one of that. Like, I'm going to like try to recover that. Now it's just like, I don't think it's worth like the five hours. So I feel like there's so many like little things like that go through like the something like that, You could use one of the companies like Atita to do yeah. that kind of stuff for you. It doesn't cost you anything to use one of those services. They only take a percentage of what they do recover. So Maybe it's not worth you spending five hours on doing it, but maybe it's worth spending 10 minutes making a phone call to see if somebody else can do it for you. No, that's a really good point. And I was talking to someone last night and they're like, yeah, like Amazon's losing a lot of stuff. I'm just like, what are you like? Are you like fighting them? I'm like, no, like I don't, I'm just like, <laughs> I think that's what I'm using Sometimes that it's for. not worth your time, but yeah. maybe it's worth your time to get somebody else to do it. <laughs> Very true. Outsource, so guess, outsource, outsource. Yeah, that's like, that's going to be a big focus for uh, me this upcoming year. So we talked about prep center. So what, how does this, I guess, will play the other role if you're like prepping your house or your apartment, like, I don't know, maybe like yeah. your part, your house catches on fire and like you lose like, I don't know, $20,000 worth of inventory or something. So I've gone through a total house fire Ooh, a couple yeah. of years ago and it's absolutely awful. So I couldn't imagine of having a business there also. So... 
it's very important. Again, we kind of go back to this inventory coverage, making sure that your inventory is covered no matter where it's at. If it's at your house, your storage unit, your grandma's garage, your friend's garage, or your 3PL, you need to have inventory coverage. A lot of our clients come and say, well, I have homeowner's insurance and if there was a fire, they're going to pay for my inventory. Absolutely not. Unless you can explain to them that you have 50,000 toothbrushes because you only use a toothbrush one time and you throw it away, they're going to know it's for a business and they're not going to cover it. So making sure that you have that inventory coverage no matter where it's at, your homeowners is not going to cover it. Same thing with your car. If you're if you're outsourcing and you go to Kohl's and you have $10,000 of inventory in your car and then you go into Walmart and someone breaks into your car and steals your inventory out of your car, your car insurance isn't going to pay for that because they know it's for a business. So your business is business. Your personal is personal. The policies do not overlap. You need to make sure that you have those things covered. Really, the only time you see a little bit of overlap is like your computer. If you can say that your computer is used for personal and business, they might be able to cover it. But other than that, really, if you want to be a business act like a real business. You need to have your crap covered no matter where it's at. If it's in your car or at, their ha at your house or your prep center, make sure you've got that inventory coverage. So it is a little bit more expensive, but it's not crazy. It's not like you're going to spend another thousand dollars covering it. It could be a couple hundred dollars. Interesting. So I don't actually don't think I have inventory coverage. So I might have to reach out to you guys and get that like situated. But so that's a separate type of insurance on top of generalized it's added to we add it to your current policy so you might see it on your policy is bpp business personal property okay. same thing. bpp hazard insurance inventory coverage like it's all interchangeable but it means the same thing got it okay that makes sense yeah i feel like there's just like yeah a lot of like little things that it's always like most people it's like well that will never happen and then it happens and, and then it does yeah we had a client actually is one of the gurus, I won't say his name, but one of the gurus that has podcasts and webinars and a uh, conference, all kinds of stuff. And he has a warehouse and he's like, I need to get my warehouse covered. I need to get the inventory covered, you know, all of this kind of stuff. I was like, great. So I quoted him, sent him the quote, followed up in a couple of weeks, still didn't hear anything back. And I was like, hey, are you going to buy this or not? And he's like, oh, you know, I'll think about it. Oh, we'll do it after the you know, after the new year and then called me a couple weeks later and he's like, Hey, can I get that policy now? And I was like, why what's going on? And he's like, well, we were moving some racking and they had a pipe and they tried to move the pipe around the racking. So they turn off the water, put the new pipe in and kind of like, you know, whatever it's called, diverted the pipe. And I guess when they turned the water back on, they didn't realize there was a leak and he had five and a half inches of water in his warehouse and had like a half a million dollars worth of damage of oh the inventory. And I was like, here's the deal. I can't ensure what happened in the past. Like if you would have bought the policy when I submitted it to you, quoted it to you, absolutely. I would have paid, but I can't do it now that you've already have a claim so I can get you insured now for any future claims, but I can't insure something in the past. So like, do it now. Don't, don't wait till you have a burning building and call me like, Ashlyn, I need this. No, I absolutely can't do it. I'm sorry. Do it now. Yeah. And I will say like, this is for me when I first, I just got a where I got a warehouse like two years ago. And I think if you work with like a good person, like Ashlyn, like, it's super overwhelming. And I think someone on your team is like, just send me the lease. And like, I sent the lease, they read it like, this is what they're asking for. Like, this is what you need. Like, you need to add this or that. Like, so like, just reach out and call. We like, have 10,000 Amazon sellers insured. Like we yeah. know this crap inside and out. We read, <laughs> we read the terms of service in our sleep. Like we get this. We've streamlined the application to try to make it so it's not so overwhelming. We only ask questions that we need. We're only asking questions that will tell us what your risks are so we can give you appropriate quotes, but you can always take stuff off. If you're like, Ashlyn, I don't want to spend $700 a year. I only want to spend 500, then take some crap off. But we're going to give you the quote that best 
protects you and then you can remove what you don't want. Another great thing is we have every single carrier that's on Amazon's preferred provider list. We have every single one of those carriers. So you complete the application one time. We shop it for you. So you don't get 17 phone calls from all of these different companies trying to like sell you shit. You get one phone call from us and we find you the best rates. So it's a very much quicker it's much streamlined you get us <laughs> and you don't get these like crappy insurance carrier sales people you you get us girls here in indiana so yeah no that, i think amazon re, or maybe it was like six months ago i don't even remember they like kind of changed it or everyone had to like resubmit something or yes. you, you had to put amazon one. on the policy i don't even remember what it was yeah but i like so reached out yeah, they talk about your that. name. So it was Amazon.com LLC on the certificate of insurance. They changed their name to Amazon.com Services LLC. So then we had to go back and redo all. At that time, we had about seven thousand clients. We had to go redo all seven thousand of our clients' certificate of insurance. Email those to our clients so they could upload it to Amazon. So we were on the forefront of that. Like if you would have gone through some carrier on the corner, they wouldn't know that kind of stuff. Like we preemptively changed everything, got certificates to our clients before they even knew that Amazon had changed the rules. So sometimes you get what you pay for. If you go online and you find a $25 a month policy, you're going to get crap service. If you come with us, we've got, you know, we're in, in it. I mean, I'm, a 52 second conference and 600 hours of ce with you guys like we're we're in it we know it yeah. <laughs> yeah and i think that is like a lot to be said too for just like peace of mind like for me being able to like reach out to them or just be like hey like i don't understand this or yeah, like good, like you could Google it and like you're gonna come up with all these lawsuits. And it's just like easier just to be like, hey, what do I need to do here? Like, right, shoot me a message on Instagram, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And yeah, and I think hey, that's of, yeah, I think you brought up like a really good point like before, and it is hard too. And like I've been guilty of it, but you are running a business. Like, yes, you're like reselling and like that's what it's called but like it is a business that like right. needs to be protected you wouldn't run around without auto and home insurance why would you if you had a brick and mortar store there's no way you would open your doors without having an insurance policy so why would you open your online store without an insurance policy so yes amazon requires it at ten thousand dollars but your first item could be the item that somebody trips over and sues you so no i I don't think you should wait till you hit that $10,000 mark. It's not worth it. Your first couple of products could be the one that screws you up. And you worked hard to build this. Um, it's, your, it's your blood, sweat, and tears. Why would you risk it to, for somebody to trip over a box? Like, it just doesn't make sense. Buy the policy now. Get it in place. So when there is a claim, you've got the coverage. Yeah, I always like to think about it, too. It's like, even I'm just buying, like, something or a course or coaching, it's like, well, like I don't only really have to sell 10 of X to like cover this. So to get come up with a 50, 70 dollars a month, like we're talking about like maybe 10 of an item, most likely. Yeah, we even tell customers like so some of our private label sellers, once you private label, because then you become solely responsible for that product. You know, some of our sellers are five, six, seven thousand dollars a year. And they come back and they're like, Well, I can't afford that. And I was like, Take that, divide it by your units. That's 12 cents a unit. You can't increase wow. your price by 12 cents a unit. You can't increase your price by 50 cents a unit. And they're like, well, now that you break it down like that, yeah, that makes more sense. So, I mean, take the cost of it, divide it by the units that you're selling, and I'm telling you, you can afford it. It's a heck of a lot cheaper than $500 an hour for an attorney. Yeah. What are some of maybe the more common things that sellers use the insurance for that you've seen? The biggest thing is just the legal defense. If you end up getting listed in a frivolous lawsuit, they will get you out of it. Really, that's the biggest thing that we see. Now, we've had we've had claims for that have settled. We had a, um, I don't know what they're called, but you like put it over the top of your door and this like resistance band, you kind of go like this 
and you like oh, yeah. exercise your arms. We had a private label product like that. And it ended up snapping off and hitting this gentleman in the eye. And he was a surgeon and ended up suing. It was $680,000 in legal fees. And they settled over $2 million. So that's probably our biggest claim that we've seen. But the legal defense, the legal fees are ridiculous because attorneys just charge for everything. I don't know if you've gone use an attorney. I've had to use one a couple of times. And every time I email him, he charges me like, a quarter of an hour. So it's like 200 and some dollars to send an email. So they just, the legal fees are just crazy. Yeah, no, that's, that's a really good point. And out of curiosity, like, so for that private label seller, does their insurance go up? Like knowing that like a claim just kind of like. So it's kind of like auto and home insurance. When you use it, the insurance company does try to recoup some of that loss. So they will increase your premium. Now, this one specifically ended up getting dropped by the carrier and we had to find them a new carrier just because it was such a huge claim. They didn't want to stay on the product. Again, a good thing with using us, we're brokers. So we were just able to take that application and move it to another carrier and get another carrier to to help her. So, but yeah, the prices can go up, they can drop you, they non-renew you, all of those kinds of things. If you were dropped, is there like a grace period? Like, they, you're technically uninsured. At the end of your term. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so like the insurance is, and they're like, no, we're not renewing you. Exactly. You're- so insurance is a contract. So they have to stay on it for the inter- entire term of that contract. So if you had a claim on the first day of your insurance, then they would keep you the rest of the year, but they just might say, eh, we're done. We're not going to do this again. <laughs> so like what happened to that doctor could have happened like, five times and they can't really get rid of them but they Correct. will eventually once the contract is up yep yeah so let's yeah lock it in like when you can lock uh, it in as i'm saying <laughs> wow okay that's really good what's like one of the probably like craziest claims you worked on <laughs> that like people are just like I don't even know why. I don't like, think that's the box. I mean, I think that's the craziest one that I've ever done because it's just absolutely ridiculous. It makes no sense to me. People are dumb. Nobody takes responsibility for their actions, but that's why we have insurance because nobody takes responsibility. What are some of, you mentioned earlier, earlier on, there's like a lot of coverages or types that most sellers don't carry. Yeah. What are some of those and like, benefits of getting that or that kind of stuff. Yeah. So the, the big one is the inventory coverage or your business, personal property, auto insurance. So if you're using your personal vehicle for business use, you're driving back and forth and sourcing, you're driving to the post office, those kinds of things. Again, your personal is personal, business is business. If you're using that personal vehicle for business use and you are in a claim or in an accident, your personal auto insurance could deny the claim. So definitely look into that. Another one that we see a lot is cargo, people shipping from overseas or shipping products definitely need cargo insurance. We also, workers comp, we have a lot of people who have employees who are lifting boxes, cutting up, cutting open boxes with box cutters, using forklifts up and down the stairs. If those were true employees and they got hurt on the job, they could absolutely sue you. That doesn't go under your normal general liability and product liability. Workers' comp is a totally separate policy. So if you have any employees, making sure that you've got that. The other policy that I highly recommend is if you have a business partner or you're the breadwinner for your family is, it's like a life insurance policy. It's called key man insurance. And if you were to pass away, this policy goes to your business or you could have it go to your wife or husband or however you want to do it. But typically it goes to your business. And then that'll help sustain your business. It could replace an employee. It could help you get legal fees to like sell your company or your surviving spouse sell the company. Whatever you need it for, that's a huge, huge plus when you've got, like when you're the sole breadwinner or you're the business owner or something like that. And the cost of that's tax deductible. So you could have a million dollar life insurance policy or key man policy and totally write it off in your business and go to your spouse or your business partner or to the business to help sustain it if you were to pass away. Wow. Okay. Two follow-up questions. 
Yeah. <laughs> so for the car, I feel like probably a lot of people are like driving to UPS or going to Walmart and stuff like that. But it has both of them at the same time, so I don't forget. Do you get normal car insurance or do you get commercial insurance? And then secondly, with the worker scenario, is that like, does it matter if they're a contractor or like if a friend's just kind of like helping you out? Like, how does that work? Okay. So on the car insurance, if you're using your car for the majority of the time as business, you really should have a commercial auto policy. You can call your current carrier for your personal lines and say, can you add business use, business use is the name, to your personal policy. If they say yes, then just add it there. It's going to be the cheaper way to go. But then you can't write it off. If you get a commercial auto and policy, then you can write it off as a business expense. So there, that's what you deal with a commercial auto. For your workers, they... Anyone, again, anyone can sue you for anything. You could trip over a box and be sued. Workers' comp is typically for those people who are employed by you. So if you're paying them under the table and they can't prove that you're an employer, it's going to be a lot harder to do an insurance claim. But if there is any type of written contract, there is sales receipts, there is direct deposits, there is anything that can tie the two of you together, there's your claim. Got it. Okay. That but makes anyone can sue you for any reason and you have to defend yourself. So you could have no contracts and pay somebody under the table and they sue you and you still have to defend yourself. You can't just pick up the phone and say, hey, LLC, can you defend me? I'm being listed in a lawsuit. There's, there's no right. way to do it. <laughs> right. Okay. Are you familiar with uh, Kevin David? I think his name is Kevin David. Uh huh. Does is there an insurance for like that? Like for people who don't know, he's basically telling people that he can like help them sell on Amazon. And he's basically selling them like something that's like totally false. But I guess there is a lot of people now like talking or like I, I tend to think I'm documenting my journey and like a lot of times I try to say in the YouTube videos like this is just what I'm doing. Like you don't have to do this. Is there like something for that or is there any risk surrounding that? For a guru, is what I call them, yes, there is insurance for gurus, vloggers, content creators, those types of things. So if anyone is giving advice, I always say you need professional liability. So that's what it's called, it's professional liability. If you are helping anyone with their listings, you need professional liability. If you are offering advice on what to buy, you need professional liability. So if you are acting in a professional capacity and giving advice to somebody, yes, you need professional liability. Now, if you are a consumer taking advice from him and he screws you over, there's not insurance for that. You have to sue him to get your money back. But if you are the face of it, then yes, you need the professional liability. Got it. So that would probably go for like a lot of people who are like, creating courses or doing like coaching, Podcasts right? Podcasts and webinars and Got it. those types of things. Yes. Is that comparable to like the regular business insurance or is that more like expensive? It's a little bit, it's a little bit more expensive. So most of our professional liability policies are like 1100 to 1500 again, depending on what you're doing. If you are, you know, just putting out content Verbally, well, like a podcast is a little bit different than written content, but it's typically eleven hundred to fifteen hundred dollars a year. Interesting. Okay, and I guess like I guess like having a disclaimer, like hey, like this isn't advice, like probably wouldn't cut it in most. Yeah, I mean, do you remember, like a trampoline? Do you have a trampoline? Kids have trampoline. Yeah, I have like a million disclaimers like sewn into the side of the trampoline. But do you know how many people still sue? You can say whatever you want about we're not responsible for it. You're responsible for it. I don't give. I don't care what you say. They're still gonna sue you. Wow. Now you might not have the million dollar settlement, but you're still gonna have to defend yourself. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's a, yeah. That's kind of. Yeah, that's eye-opening to kind of just think about that. And okay, so let me go one more one more crazy story. So I don't know if anybody's heard of this Prop 65. Have you heard about this? Someone actually I know. Just I'm not going to say more about it, but like he okay. was explaining it to me and he's like really screwed, but I don't really so, understand why. I didn't create the listing. You created the listing. You didn't put the warning on it. 
I added myself to your listing and I am getting sued. Okay. Again, people sue for everything. You do not have to be responsible for you to be pulled into this lawsuit. Everyone is like, oh my gosh, I'm going to sell on Amazon and make all this money. You could, but you could also be pulled into so many different lawsuits. Like just think about it. I would not do anything without having insurance. Yeah, no, that is kind of, yeah, because the situation this person's in is just so ridiculous. And it came, well, it's not public, but it came down to there, basically there's a company out there test buying this certain item, testing it for something. And lead. like, what, yeah, lead. And 1% or I don't, the smallest fraction of a percent will test. So basically if you buy enough cans, of whatever, like it's gonna come up eventually, and then now you have the can. And all it is like, it's it's an attorney who's trying to get rich. So you have to settle. There's nothing else really you could do. There's not a lot of there's not insurance coverage for it. You just have to settle. And let's say like a thousand dollar, you settle for a thousand dollars because you sold one whatever seven hundred dollars of that like goes to the attorney and. The rest of it goes to the fund. So it is really an ambulance chaser. They are just going after anyone and anything that they can do. They're filing these class action lawsuits. And these third-party sellers are the ones that are having the hit for it. Yeah, and I think that is one of the hardest things about selling on Amazon. There's just most people, I mean, I'll speak for myself, but like I'm all about like, Finding, st like, I'm not about reading, like, the little details or, like, the terms of service. <laughs> like, yeah. Don't say that to your insurance like agent. <laughs> I'm sure you sent me emails about, like, the change of insurance or whatever. And I was like, yeah, whatever. Like, I'm sure it's fine or it. covered or whatever. But, yeah, I think, like, a lot of the times when I first started selling, I just assumed, like, oh, like, whatever. Like, it's Amazon's problem. Like, it's not my problem. Like, if something were to go wrong here. But then the but more and know. more I hear and see, it turns out that's not the yeah, and Amazon's trying. So back in the day, they were trying to take they they were taking responsibility for these things, and I think they just are tired of paying all the legal fees, and they're pushing it back on you guys. And it's only going to get worse. There's rumors that Q3 of next year they're going to just require their, the insurance for everyone, so they're going to drop that ten thousand dollar limit and require that you have insurance just to sell on the platform. So I think it's going to get worse. I think they're just tired of being in these lawsuits and the third party sellers not being responsible for it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense too. And I do kind of wonder why the number is like 10,000. And I think I'll say this, I think when you first get started, maybe you're like, yeah, like, I get it. Like you don't want another expense. Like you're not necessarily making money yet, but like you almost have to think that like you're going to do $10,000 like in the, is it for the year or it's like your for month. third month for the month. Okay, for the month. Right now. So, yeah. But yeah, it just doesn't seem worth it. Like to pay like 50 or 80 bucks. Like, just to, like, yeah. No, for like 25 bucks a month, then you've got, bucks. it's you're stupid not to. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd agree with that. Is there anything I missed? I feel like I'm not like an expert in insurance. No, so. you've done really great. Really good question. No question Process, ask. I guess we can talk about that. If you go to www.ecom.insured, there's this button that says get a quote. Then it says like I private label or don't private label. Pick which one it is and what you do. And then the application's on there. We get the application, a live human reviews the application to determine where we're going to put you. It's not AI. It's not a robot like all of these online platforms. So we do the quote. We quote you with multiple different carriers, find you the best price, send that to you via email. If you don't want to talk to us, you don't have to talk to us. You could do everything through email. If you want to talk to us, then you can call us and we can talk to you. But the process is super, super easy for RAOA wholesalers and you're not selling like fidget spinners with knives on the end of it. It could be a day, could be same day, depending on how crazy we are. But then once you pay for the policy, then we'll send you that certificate of insurance. And we have step-by-step -step instructions on how to upload it. I have a video that I made on how to do it, what box to put what in. So again, we make it super, super simple for you to get the policy, get it uploaded, get everything approved and forget about it. 
And that's what we want. We want you to know that we've got your back and that you can sleep at night and knowing that you, you're protected and not have to fuss about it all the time. Yeah, and it sounds silly, like, oh, like how to upload it. But when I got the new certificate of insurance, I was uploading it and they kept like rejecting it. So I like emailed you guys. I think like Hartford has like a different name or something. Yeah, so like, like well, Hartford, is Hartford is a brand. Hartford. Like you guys, yeah. you have like a brand and then you have like a legal entity. A lot of people put Hartford because that's the brand, but there's a legal entity behind it. Yeah, that like fixed it, but... Yeah, no, I can't recommend Ashlyn enough. I mean, I've been with her, I think, like two, three years now. Just super simple to do. And for me, this year is going to be like a lot of outsourcing. Like I'm getting a bookkeeper. I'm getting all this stuff because I don't know. I just want to focus on like selling and like when silly issues like this stuff comes up or, you know, like a cease and desist, it's like, like I don't want to be spending like 10, 20 hours looking into it to just have to then like reach out to someone and be like, I don't know what I'm doing. Right. Pick up the phone and call us. Find yeah. me on Facebook. Find me on Instagram. Ashley. Yeah, what is the best Madden. place to find you? I mean, if you just have like simple questions and you want to just reach out to me on social media, you absolutely can. Or ecom.insure. You can get a hold of us there. Or you can email us at sales at ashlandhaddeninsurance.com. But I'm, I'm on social media all the time. If you want to find me on social media and send me a quick like, Hey, I'm looking at this product. What do you think? And take a picture of it. I'll, I'm super honest. I'll say, absolutely not. Stay the hell away. <laughs> or yeah, go for it. I think that's fine. So any, any way that you want to reach out to me is fine. Cool. Well, thank you so much for being here. This, I just can't wait to send this to people who ask about insurance, to like watch this video. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Of course. Have a good night. You too.